But we're on to our, <clears throat> sorry, paper review segment. The daily graphic this morning says, report flawed. That's the screaming headline. Government punches holes in Auditor General's finding. Comes with a photo of the information minister. And also, voter register exhibition extension fails to improve patronage. Families are free to seek second opinion on DNA results, according to the acting IGP, Mr. James Opon Bueno. The Daily Guide, Takrati Girls Disclosed DNA Report. Uh, Takrati Girls, I'm sorry, uh, Disclosed DNA Report. That's... Um, Pressure being mounted on police to uh, give us some more detail beyond what the acting IGP uh, disclosed in the press uh, that, that got the whole nation shaking. Second suspect in you know, two force chief murder detained. And at some point, Hines uh, Medra has been a uh, suspect, has been detained. Five Yemen is arrested over breaches. And PPA boss, <coughs> sorry, wants public hearing. <coughs> sorry about that. Don't discourage education minister. And, uh, well, this is a front page story. It's the Ghanaian Times. Terrorist attacks in West Africa. 11,400 die in four years. Thousands injured. Millions displaced. Ghana to ban single-use plastics. That's a question. And Controller Accountant General Department committed to addressing unsolicited text messages. And Finance Ministry to challenge Auditor General over crawl and associates one million dollar payments the finder business finder that is 20 firms make losses on gsc market capitalization drops by 47 um 4.7 ghana cities and payment to crawl and associate was backed by contractual agreement information minister inflation drops to 7.8 percent after rebasing my guest this morning uh, from the ndc is dr clement park who is the mp for bolsa south we are yet to receive our representative from the side of the mpp so so now uh, kubasa kubasa <laughs> <laughs> you're doing you're doing very but I'm well trying. Yeah, you're, doing, you're doing well the, the, the food hasn't come but i'm, I'm trying yeah 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 <laughs> you know I, I promise you some good dessert and our, Abs absolutely our traditional bolsa soup known Ab as manviak absolutely it, it will loosen the the tank a bit more Absolutely. But I must, I must commend you. You are, you are catching up faster than, than Bright. <laughs> so that is a, a feather in your, in your uh, cap. Senior Bright. Yeah. Senior Bright. Yeah. Good so morning let me say good morning to you Bright. and uh, to our viewers, mm. uh, especially my constituents in uh, Bulsa South, mm. uh, whom we greeted together. So okay. Bulsa Mina, Mapu Sinu mm. It's always a pleasure to be here. Okay. Well, the page, front page, and uh, there's a bit of it from the uh, page six of the Daily Guide, is talking about... Uh, us not discouraging the education minister because he's doing a very good job. And, well, a portion of it says, um, I commend the Minister for Education, Dr. Matthew Pogoprempe, and his team for a swift and effective manner in which they have uh, handled the reported issues regarding the computerized school selection and placement system. Samir Oku told the Daily Guide yesterday. He said that there were so many individuals and groups, especially the opposition NDC, who are praying for the minister to fail on the free SHS policy, but said the minister is determined to put critics and propagandists to sleep. Napo is doing his best to make many children feel comfortable in schools. He is determined to ensure that President Kufado's vision of giving children basic education um, uh, free until they are ready to enter tertiary institutions will become a reality. The MPP organizer has said, uh, Doc, why are you making the work of the education minister difficult? Why are you discouraging him and paying people to faint and busing people to the centers. And yesterday I saw a photo of your national youth organizer, Giorgio Pareado, uh, with some members of the youth wing. They were standing in front of uh, packs of drinks and biscuits and water. What were they meant for? Well, uh, Johnny, let me say good morning again to you and to uh, viewers mm -hmm. uh, and to state that, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. party through our... National Communication Officer actually mm. issued a statement mm. yesterday uh, bordering on, uh, you know, the rather chaotic mm -hmm. uh, placement that uh, we are witnessing because it is not over yet, even okay. as, as we speak. Okay. But you see, it is quite important that we are honest to ourselves and we are bold enough to hold persons that we pay with our taxes mm. 
to dispense responsibilities they owe us as a people accountable. How? If and when they fall short, either deliberately mm. or as a result of their inability mm. to fully understand and appreciate the responsibilities that they have been entrusted with. Mm. The comment that the uh, national organizer of the New Patriotic Party has mm. made mm. Uh, is quite clearly beside the point. How so? And it is just another attempt to try and shift blame. It is very clear that parents and their wards have suffered and continue to suffer a great deal of trauma and frustration mm. as a result of the inability of GES and the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. to execute this placement the way we have come to understand it traditionally. Why would anyone mm. want to bring your word, even if it is from Cape Coast mm. or Takradi or Sunyani, and some even all the way from Tamale, mm. to Accra, to expose yourselves mm. and your word to challenging natural and cultural conditions. Mm. And then when people have come to congregate, because as per the information that has come out, mm. there's been the compromise of the software that they themselves deployed, mm. a software that was procured and is being utilized mm. only within the last three months versus what was there previously, which was working efficiently. The failure of the ministry and GES to properly inform the public mm. and parents in particular about where to go to seek help if and when there were challenges as we are hearing parents, mm. uh, you know, inform us of, you know, boys being placed in all-girls schools and, and vice versa, you know, persons who don't have any form of disability being sent to the school for, for, for the blind and school for the deaf, for example. The, 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 the fact that, you know, some parents went on with their wars to do the self-placement mm. mm. only to be told that, you know, that system was compromised and didn't work after they had printed the forms and gone to the schools. Mm. The fact that parents have actually gone with their wars to schools and have seen their names. On notice boards. All that notwithstanding, 90% of, of, the, of the applicants the, have been the placed. Point, the point is, is, is this, that not good enough? The point is that mm. there has been a colossal failure. 90%? First of all, 90% placement. That is, but is even if it is 1%, that, mm. is, that remains to be placed. That is still an issue. We don't, we don't put people in charge of affairs to tell us that 90%. You should be striving for 100%. That is what we expect. And if the minister's interpretation, and I'll come to the component of his attempt to try and blame his political opponents for his own failures, which is definitely unacceptable. Now, every Ghanaian student who has passed mm. expects to be placed. The ministry through GES tells us that there are a lot more vacancies right. than the number of students who have qualified you, you doubt to that. enter the free senior high school. You doubt that? The point is, if that is the case, why is it that the process of placing them has been so chaotic and is causing a lot of parents grief and pain? And I feel raw, that raw, raw score aggregate were what were used. Well, I am, the students I, I am, themselves I am, not, I am not disputing their claim. Mm. I am saying that if that were the case, then what accounted for the, the chaotic situation that we are witnessing? Mm. What accounted for the parents leaving? where they are, they, are, they, are, they are domiciled to come to Accra with their wards. You bust people, people to cause see, confusion. That, that is the and most you went ridiculous. To give them food to that eat. is the most ridiculous excuse I have ever heard in my life. For a minister of state, mm. a cabinet minister, a minister in charge of <laughs> such an important sector like education, mm. to dismiss the pain and suffering and agony of parents, to rubbish every single legitimate reason that has been proffered to justify why parents had to come and camp mm. at Black Star Square by blaming his political opponents, claiming that our flag bearer, our party, had bars people. 
Why would we do that? What is our motivation? What was, what was so, the food for? So, the food so, that the food so, that George Opariado so, and the so, Boot Wing had. What was it? So for? I will come to that. But is it not natural that if you see people suffering and in need, you offer them a helping hand? Is it your job? Well, are we not Ghanaians? Are we not citizens? So if you are walking by and you see, uh, you know, a bunch of hungry kids feeling that enough test sitting by, you just walk by. We have every reason to empathize and to show concern. That doesn't mean that we, 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 we are culpable or that we had a role in bringing them. There, there are, so, so, many, no, there are listen, so many hungry people roaming listen, the streets of Ghana. Why, why are, haven't you these, sent them these food? These are people who have come from all over the country. Mm -hmm. And this is because they have been disappointed by people who are being paid with their taxes to execute a system that hitherto has gone on smoothly. Mm. What is the, the justification for changing the software in the last uh, uh, three months? After 13 years, don't you think they need a change? So shouldn't that have caused an, impro an improvement instead of what we are seeing? And why didn't they do the needed work to ensure that the systems were safe? How come the systems got compromised? Who compromised them? Have they filed a case with the security agencies to look into how the system was compromised? And look, just a bit on this, this rather, you know, pedestrian attempt to, to transfer blame. So, we knew the parents who had wards who didn't get placed. So, we went around the country and then we brought them to Accra. Mm. And then we called them, the wards and their parents, mm. about how to act. We even called them on how to collapse and pretend. And in doing so, we connived with the ambulance service mm. and the paramedics of what was going to happen. Mm. And so they would whisk them. So you staged what to, is on the TV to, now. To the hospitals. You, you guys yeah, staged what coming. is on the TV I just now. want Ghanaians and your good self to appreciate how ridiculous this claim is. So we staged that in connivance with the ambulance service, in connivance with the security personnel there, in connivance with the parents and the students, in connivance with even the media who could not have even reported what they saw with buses bringing people, in connivance with the doctors at the emergency, you know, uh, 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 rooms in the hospitals where these, these uh, kids who had collapsed were sent. Does it make sense to you? Does it really make sense to you? I mean, I mean when I heard it, I, I cringed. I said, for God's sake, you are a minister. And a minister for education for that matter. At least, if you are going to embellish or make up a story to excuse yourself from having failed in executing this, find something better to say. He's a doctor. He knows it when somebody is faking, won't he? So, so he, he was there and he did the examination to determine that these kids who passed out didn't pass out. But all in all, he's saying that we connived and brought the parents from across the country, connived with the ambulance services, connived with the security agencies, connived with the media, connived with the doctors, connived with the paramedics, and all of this as a minister who is part of government. Mm. You have access to state security. You chose not to file any complaint or to cause any arrest. Because what he's describing, by and large, is an act of fraud. And so if he believed that we had engaged in this practice, which is not certainly the case, he should have taken the needed action. Samuel rather Kusa. than going on, on radio to, to, to go and complain. Samuel, and Samuel, goes on Samuel, Samuel say, says that you said free SHS could only be achieved in 20 years. So look, you are paying you are paying Johnny. that Napo and his team Johnny. are able to do Johnny. this. Johnny. And, and they have done three cohorts Johnny. already. Johnny. So you are paying. I have listened to the minister himself and I, it is not what Samir Oku is saying that is going to change my mind. It is very clear mm. that our educational sector generally is under stress. Look, we, we, we have a crisis. It is yet not apparent. But the crisis situation that we are facing mm -hmm. in the educational sector in this country is yet to manifest. And it is not the case, never, has anyone in the NDC, including our flag bearer, opposed the free senior high school policy. Really? We never did. Really? We never did. Really? Uh, have you forgotten that in the build-up to the, even the 2012 mm -hmm. and 2016 mm -hmm. elections, our position was to adopt the gradualist approach.
progressively. Mm. Their argument was that they were going to do it wholesale. And they have. They have not. They began by doing it gradually. When they took over the reins of this country, mm. was it every single student who was in senior high school who, who had it free? Remember, they started with the first year students who came into first year when they assumed the reins of power. Mm. The two, the, the, the seniors, mm. those who were in form two and form ahead. three, mm. ahead of the first year students, they did not benefit. We even argue, some of us, mm. that that in itself was discriminatory. And that, to be fair, if you had promised that <coughs> you were going to do it wholesale, mm. then the expectation was that you were going to do it that way. And now we have also complained and criticized, rightly so. And parents and other educationists have all complained about the negative consequences of, of, of the double track system. So we have said that this program, mm. this policy, is one that is born of the Constitution. Mm. And when we come, we would arrange a stakeholder forum mm. to review it with the intent of improving it. But you were, we in, power. Never said you were in power for eight years. We, how come, we had a how come you never put it together? And, and then when somebody, you, somebody comes in and Johnny, says, look, I'm starting we started first years, you I will know. do second years, I will do third years, you Johnny, have a problem. We how started come? it. How you come? know that we had started taking off certain components of fees from the prospectus mm. that the students were required you know, to, to fulfill as part mm. of the, the, the processes of being in senior high school. Mm. We took away 11 different components of fees as part of our effort towards coming to the, 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 the universal free senior high school. Mm. So they adopted a different approach. But we have come to accept that. What they have started is acceptable because the constitution requires that this should happen. Will you continue and it? Most definitely. And we have said that time and again. So this, this, this issue of trying to hide behind their own delusional mm. impression that we would cancel this and to try and use this as an excuse mm. to mask all failures, even in the country, not just confining it to the educational sector. Mm. It's not going to work because Ghanaian parents and wards mm. are also witnesses. They are participants. They are the beneficiaries. And indeed, they are the same parents that the minister, by and large, insulted by claiming mm. that they were responsible for creating the chaos that caused them to leave the comfort of their homes, to travel all the way mm. with their wards, to come and camp at the Black Star Square. And some of them were collapsing. And instead of the minister speaking a language that will assuage their pain, that will comfort them, mm. that will give them hope. Mm. He chooses to be so insensitive and reckless. What should the minister have said? And then goes what, what on should, if you to were, try if you and were, attack his If you were opponent. minister of education, what would you have said? Well, you accept that there are lapses. Hasn't the ministry itself agreed that the, the system, one of the, uh, 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 the, the systems was, was compromised? Mm. Didn't they agree? Well, was that also the doing of the NDC and, and John Mama? or a, doc a doctor pack. Didn't they go and buy the software just about three months ago? Mm. Did they come to consult us about what software to get? Did they come to consult us or tell us about what security measures they had put in place, whether there was a firewall or mm. other mm. IT systems had been put in place to save that, that network? When they, they decided to fire mm. the trained professional staff, they, and they, to bring they, in they party have, apparatus. They have denied that. And to bring in party apparatus. They have denied that. Did they confer with the they NDC? They have denied that nobody Was that the sad. NDC that, they, they have that said that they should, they should engage they in, have denied in, in, that in that people, witch hunt where the they government, have sacked professionals and brought party apparatus? Government communicators have denied that people were sacked. Well, that is why we are calling for an inquiry. This matter cannot just be swept under the carpet. We must find out why this happened. And people must be held accountable. Do you think it is just sufficient that we just simply speak about this and then we let it go to rest. The government people have been put in charge mm. of being responsible. And if there are failures, they should expect that the good people of this country have every right, political opponents or not, to hold them accountable and to ask them to explain why they failed in executing a mandate that they are being paid to undertake. The, the government says don't come to the Black Star Square anymore. Uh, we have created regional centers 
to solve your problems. And now calm has been restored. Yeah, but you see, Tony. So, so give them credit. That is, that is the point. Give why, them credit. Why couldn't this information have been made available to parents from the onset? I mean, did it have to take a week, three days for young lads to be collapsing mm. before you then announce and make public that there are regional centers? Couldn't this have been done prior? to even the, the, the processes commencing? Couldn't there have been public service announcements on radio and TV indicating that if and when you have a challenge regarding your placement mm. and you are in the Upper West region, you go here, you are in the Upper East region, you go there. Couldn't that have been done? Don't they have PROs, both GES and the ministry? Mm. What is their responsibility? This issue is much bigger than it looks. There has to be an your, your Your party is asking for the head of the Minister for Education. You're asking that he resigns immediately. Is that not too harsh a thing to ask, especially for a man who has led a team to uh, initiate free SHS? There are three cohorts in there now. Give him some credit. Why are you asking for his head? We're asking for his head because he has failed in this assignment. And, and the reasons that he has tried to proffer to justify this failure are untenable. Last, last and, year was and not like his, that. His willingness to try and blame his failures on others is, is honestly repugnant and, and it, is, it, is, it is disingenuous. Why, why would you try to blame your failures on, on others? I mean, he, he is supposed to be a role model as well. So if you are the Minister for Education and these are your pronouncements, this is your posture at a time like this, what example are you setting mm. for those millions of, of, of the youth who are going to go through the system that you have been given the responsibility mm. to superintend over. So we have every reason to call for his head because mm. his conduct is unacceptable. Mm. And as I indicated earlier, this is not the only challenge that we are having in the educational sector. I am sure you have heard mm. that although the basic schools have opened, teaching and learning is not progressing because of the rush mm. with which the new curriculum is being implemented. The, the, the workbooks are not available, Ga Ga and the books that the teachers need to be able to instruct mm. are not available. Gov so why Ga are schools Ga open government says when there is no teaching and learning going on? Government says the kits that the training kits that were given to the teachers at the curriculum workshops are enough to hold on until. Are, are you? Are them. you? Are you? Well, impressed? that's what Richard no, are here. Are you? Are you impressed? No. You, is is that what you expect? I mean, we are. Are we a serious nation? You introduce a new curriculum. You will even poorly orient the teachers who are supposed to be the, the vessels through which this knowledge is supposed to be transferred to the students. Mm. They complain about how they were, they, they, they were, they, they were, they, they were disrespected. Mm. They had to complain. Some of them even had to demonstrate mm. for the right thing to be done. They even finished that, that training. One would have expected that at least the workbooks and, and the instructional books would be available. They are in print. So, if it is going to take one month, teachers and students at the basic schools, they are there. They are just going to be idling around for a whole month. Teachers will be paid. Parents will be preparing their work every morning to go to school. Are we a serious nation? I mean, does it make sense to you? And I'm not even going to touch the tertiary level. You know. You, you saw, you, you, you've been hearing what is going on at the tertiary level as well. Look, we are bordering on a crisis, and the sooner we recognize that we need to do a lot more and act to accountability, mm. transparency, <laughs> in the way we are running the educational sector for, of this country, mm. we will be in for trouble. Are you not supposed to be sharing part of the blame because they, according to, uh, if you will, let's dovetail into the university crisis accommodation issues, and the, the idea was that successive governments were supposed to have put up structures, you know, as and when, so that it will cater for the ballooning uh, population in the universities. Did you do that so you deserve a bit of the blame? No, we did you? our part. I mean, go to the campuses and see. And, and rather compare that to when this government took over the reins of, uh, you know, the affairs of uh, this nation, whether they have put up any structure mm. in, in any of our universities. Even at the senior high school level. You know, the claim was that some 804 mm. structures were at various stages of completion, mm. you know. 
uh, across the country. And at, at the same time, we also had get, get farm contractors complaining mm -hmm. that a number of them had yet to receive, you know, payments for certificates raised. Mm -hmm. And that they were going to lock uh, about 766 across the, the, the nation mm -hmm. if they were not paid. I know that at least some payments have okay. okay. But those 804 structures that the ministry claimed were at various levels of completion, mm -hmm. we have asked for a detailed report of when those were started, which contractors they were awarded to, and their locations, so that we can verify. Remember, I'm a member of the Education Committee of right, Parliament. Right. I'm the deputy ranking member. Mm. So we have an interest, and it is part of my responsibility to make sure that even when government, through the ministry or GES, comes out to make pronouncements or make claims mm. or try mm -hmm. to deny, we are able to cross-check and verify. And all of these are processes that are unfolding. I can assure you, okay. the minority, we are going to hold the minister in GES duly accountable. We'll hold their feet to the fire in as far as the educational sector is concerned. Okay. Join us with your thoughts and comments on WhatsApp, 0202166633. And uh, we're here to receive the MPP representative this morning. But my guest in studio is Dr. Clement Park, is the MP for Bulsa South, and he speaks on behalf of the NDC. Let's uh, move on. And uh, yesterday, there was a presser that was held addressed by the um, technical advisor to the Minister for Environment, Science and Technology and Innovation, Mr. Boachip. And he says, while well, single-use single, single use plastics are likely to be banned in the coming days, as President Akufuado uh, prepares to launch the Global Plastics Action Partnership on October 1, the special advisor on plastics to the minister, um, Mr. Oliver Boachi, has announced single-use plastics such as poly, uh, polythene materials used uh, usually in packaging, uh, including pure water sachet, poly bags and rubber wrappers. According to him, the anticipated ban on such plastics, however, would be done in a manner that will sustain, will be sustainable to ensure that it did not disrupt the circular economy of plastics in the country. This has been on the front banner for a long time. I remember that after the June 3 disaster, um, I interviewed ex-president Mahama at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, who said we need to go the Kigali way ASAP because of the harm that plastics had done to us at the time. We are in 2019 and we're still considering whether or not to ban plastics. On the side of that conversation is the fact that the manufacturers have also said, you're going to push us out of work if you go with an outright ban. What do you say? Well, Johnny, I have had, uh, I would say, the privilege of uh, doing a statement on the floor of parliament on this issue, mm. calling for a ban mm. on, on plastics. Right. Uh, obviously, the speaker admitted it because he thought that the uh, matter was a matter that was worthy mm -hmm. of uh, national attention uh, and, of course, was worthy of uh, being taken on mm -hmm. by parliament itself. I remember on the day that I did my, my statement on uh, the menace of uh, plastic waste mm -hmm. uh, and how... It, it is affecting mm. us as, as a species and the environment. The, the minister himself, mm. the uh, professor from Pompwati, from Pompwati mm. you know, and over and all for that matter, uh, my senior, come okay. out, was in the, in the chamber. And uh, when I finished and uh, contributions were made, the speaker gave him the opportunity to also comment. Okay. And I remember he did indicate that uh, this was in the offing. Mm. But as you have said, it is, not, it is not a new conversation. Mm. You know, we have been discussing this for some time. Uh, but I believe the time has come for us to give effect. Mm. Because the, the impact of uh, plastic waste on our environment and our health <laughs> is, is very dire. We, we are failing to appreciate the impact. But are you aware that some scientific research, and, and this was a point that was raised during the, the debate on my, on my statement mm -hmm. by the Honorable Senator, mm -hmm. that, that there is a, a, a research that is showing that nanoplastics mm -hmm. are now being found in our bloodstream. Right. That is how bad it has become. Mm -hmm. So even if we are to segregate the impact on wildlife mm -hmm. and the sea, where we know that now some fishermen actually 
wheel in a lot more plastic mm. yeah, than, than fish. And that a lot of aquatic animals are dying as a result of uh, plastic pollution mm. in, in the ocean. Okay. And the fact that if no serious action is taken by uh, 2050, mm. by 2050, we would have more plastics in the sea than fish. Mm. Then you begin to appreciate the, the magnitude. I mean, look at even us. Mm. The flooding. One of the, the primary agents of clogging our waterways, mm. or if you like, gutters, mm. is, is, is plastics. Everywhere. Mm. Even in the so-called plush parts of, 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 of this uh, mm. capital. Where you go, <laughs> the so-called East Legons, I mean, it is everywhere. So I agree that the time has come for this action to be taken. Is it, a, is it an attitudinal problem of how people generate and manage waste, plastic waste, as opposed to, uh, and if we're able to manage that properly, then we, we may not be necessarily talking about ban. Well, we can minimize it. But quite honestly, the, the single-use plastics are just too common, readily available, and the, the price tag it's within everybody's reach. The government has put uh, out so, uh, litter bins. It is. It is. It is it's yeah. put out litter bins as, am, as yes, one of the interventions. The, the, the attitude is one. Okay. Because to be honest, we are indisciplined. Mm -hmm. it, it is not even in the area of of how we dispose our waste. Okay. But we are indisciplined. Part mm -hmm. of the bane of this country, by and large, is indiscipline, and it is there across the whole structure of our society. Mm -hmm. Indiscipline. I mean. <laughs> Should I cite examples? Persons that we, we, we don't expect to run red lights, mm. who run red lights, for example. Persons that you expect that if they were to drink a bottle of soda in the plastic, mm. they will leave that bottle, that plastic bottle in their, in their vehicles, mm. or sachet water bottle, mm. uh, mm. you know, plastics in their vehicles, and then get home to properly dispose them. They throw them out when, when the vehicles are moving. Mm. And so when you do that and it rains, eventually, they all get into the drains. The drains get choked. Mm. The water is unable to find its cause. And then there is flooding. Now, now that we're calling for a ban, we're looking also at the economy, the local economy. I mean, a lot of lives uh, are latched onto this. Pure water sellers, watch sellers, you know, rice sellers. Everybody Look, is, is, uses plastic. I, I thought you said of, that. Of some Go government said that they are going to do this. In phases, right. it's going to be a gradual right. process. Mm. It's exactly the point that the minister made after I had made the, my, my statement. Because mm. I was calling for an outright, right. especially single-use plastics. Mm. But you see, there are alternatives. There is no reason why we can't profit from our waste. I, I did an article, I think in 2009, mm. 2010, thereabout, where I explained, and it is there. We can profit from our waste. Mm. There, there, are, there are recycling plants. Okay. The technology is now available mm. for you to be able to gather your plastic waste and then make them available to a company. Mm. And that company can process them. And if indeed we will take away all of the bureaucratic bottlenecks, mm. which is preventing a lot of small, medium-sized recycling plants from setting up. Mm. Because apparently the bigger ones the much more established ones mm. have always found ways to thwart that effort, then I think that that will become uh, an attractive conduit for persons to take their plastic waste mm. to those small and medium recycling plants okay. to process. And if we can have a system set up, as we have in Europe and North America, mm. where you can gather your plastics take them mm. to the center, depending on the number or, or, or the weight, you will be paid. Right. And I think if we start a process like that, mm. where people know that they can actually prof they can profit, mm. they can benefit by gathering their waste, including mm. plastic waste, mm. and then taking them to a specific location, mm. I think it will help change the attitude. The, the world over, so far, we've been able to produce about 9 billion uh, tons of plastic waste. Um, in Ghana, for example, every month we're able to produce 70,000 PET bottles, the plastic bottles. That's right. Now, we're only able to recycle 2%. So it means that 
the, the remaining 98% are out there and we keep adding on to it. And I remember that we set up, we set up um, the environmental excise tax to be able to collect monies from these producers and use them for purposes of recycling and managing the waste. Where is the authority? Well, I, <laughs> you I, did, I, you would, didn't, I would find your, out. Your government didn't initiate the authority. I would, I this would government is not initiating authority. But we are told that we have some 1 billion Ghana cities in it. Well, we can, we can verify. But mm. the, the point I seek to make is that the plastic waste challenge is a menace. But if we have, that must it, be addressed. It, we are, if we agree it's a menace, and which is why we said, look, let's have an authority that can deal with it. And maybe seven, eight years down the line, we have not been able to set up the authority, and yet we are collecting monies from these uh, producers. We are not being fair to them, and now we are calling for, for their heads. We, say, well, we are not calling for their heads, as far <laughs> as I know. The minister has said that. So, so where's the money? Where's the money? Well, as the you money said, that you collect. The money is being collected. Yes. If the money is being so collected. So use the money. Set up, would, set up recycling plants. It would be in uh, the, the, the coffers of the state. So why didn't your and, government, and for the, example. The managers of the state. Why didn't the, your government. The managers of the state have a responsibility. But you, you have managed. utilizing it. But you have managed the state before. The, why didn't you set up the recycle factory? The managers of the state have access to that resource. And they are in charge of the affairs of the state. And I'm submitting to you, it. Dr. Park, that you have been in government So before. because it wasn't done before, it shouldn't be done I'm now. Asking, no, I'm, I've not said that. I'm that saying, why didn't you do it? I want to know why. I want to understand I why know, I don't your know why government I don't didn't know, do it. I don't know why you it recognized that it was important. I don't important. know why it wasn't done. But okay. what I know is that, per your argument, the resources are there. Right. And there's a government in place, mm. uh, which has announced what it is going to do. It should take advantage of the resources available. But... The system needs to be liberalized. Okay. Those one or two dominant recycling or waste management companies mm. that have sought to stifle the effort by small, medium mm. scale recycling companies which have wanted to come into existence mm. must be asked to back off okay. and allow for there to be many more companies mm. across the nation and if that were to be done that would help entice people to know where they should take their waste okay uh you can also join us with your comments on 020216663 and we're also on twitter and facebook uh, hashtag is tv3 new day we're, we're we're having studio dr clement apak is the mp for bolsa south on behalf of the ndc the mpp uh, rep is yet to arrive so uh for our friends at the mpp headquarters who manage communications let them know that uh the mpp rep for this morning has not arrived but bella has arrived in I good have time arrived. and to, i hope i hope to I share some of the messages gets in on time yes to do okay. some of the messages i hope he gets in on time because there are lots of questions that have been left <laughs> unanswered but anyways good morning tv3 thanks to the ndc man that is dr clement Park, oh, by the I'm way uh good. mpp is, is managing the country nana promised ghana free shs now uh those who paid fees well Okay, uh, ugh, trying to get that. We thank Allah because now it's about quantity and not quality. Okay, okay. I guess he's talking about the experience before as compared okay. to now. Anybody who pretends to be what he or she is not, and as a result, guess what he or she does not deserve, would face, uh, would be faced with disgrace and scandals upon scandals. This is exactly what is happening to our 419 NPP government. This is Asanko uh, Santa Maria. Good morning, John from Abor. In fact, Napo is simply disrespectful to the people of this country. In fact, this new curriculum is introduced uh, nonsensically. Mm, okay, really? why not gradually introduce it whilst the old one is in use until everything is ready irresponsible people in charge of this indeed please dr park when madame charlotte Assay said the system of the ec was compromised did she file a case with the security agency but you had no problems with that why do you now want to attach yourselves the ndc to free shs when you are vehemently opposed it i thought the host was going to ask you those questions this is alex kuma <laughs> <laughs> from kwame down so now the minister for education has been my favorite minister but his comments on the school placement challenges are uncalled for i'm highly disappointed in him he should come and apologize this is from isaac donko from ikumfi jinan kuma okay um 
I pity this government and these communicators who have become stooges and psychopaths defending every policy of government, whether it makes, it makes sense or not. Would one be wrong to describe them as robots? As Sanko again from Santa Maria. Good morning, sir. Please, I'm in Tamale and my daughter has not been placed. What should I do since my job will not allow me to come to Accra? Wow. Mm. Uh, Johnny, the education minister should accept all criticism in good faith and think of improving the placement systems next year. Thank you, Dan from Takarade. Good morning, TV3. Good morning, Ghanaians living everywhere. Sincerely, this government and its policy on education is a failure at all levels. The the Minister of Education has nailed the failures of his government by that unprofessional statement. And if, the, if Nanado's government is committed and competent, uh, they should have fired him by now. May God save Ghana, Koklo, Vidambala, Volta region. Now, the media should also find out from the schools um, whether they received packs, especially Kumbungu district. No single teacher has the so-called packs apart from the 15 teachers who were the facilitators. Mm. Okay. Walanyo in Akwetia says democracy and rule of law has become a bad example and pre bad precedence for Africa, especially Ghana. Ghana is what is, it is today because of NDC's bad governance. They go upstream to muddy the waters and come to the downstream to ask who muddied the waters. Okay, Elder Ofosampofo is a free man walking on the streets with his V8, talking about kidnapping and corruption. Attorney General may cost me not to vote in 2020 if NDC corrupt officials are still enjoying tickling us and laughing upon all their create loot share syndrome that they invented into Ghana politics. That's it, Johnny. Okay, now, interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see how much more time we have. Bella, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, about just about 10 minutes to, yeah. to yeah. wrap up this segment. Oh, um, okay, uh, well, the Daily Graphic front page is talking about a report that's been flawed. That's according to government. The government has been punching holes in the Auditor General's findings. Some one million Ghana cities uh, dollars, I beg your pardon. And the government has challenged findings in the Auditor General's report that implicated the Ministry of Finance in a one million dollar contract irregularity with Crawl Associates, an asset recovery firm. According to the Minister of Information, Kojo Ponkrumah, the claims made by the audit report that the firm has been paid money for work not done was factually wrong and inconsistent with the constitutional provisions that allowed for institutions cited uh, for financial infractions to be given the opportunity of a response. At a press briefing in Accra held yesterday, the information minister um, stressed that the contract had no, no deficiencies or financial irregularities as captured by the Auditor General's report. Now, here's uh, the government saying the Auditor General got it wrong and that what they're saying is not entirely what it is. They're quoting the financial regulation, and they're saying, look, uh, Auditor General, please come again. This Johnny. is not what it is. Why are you putting sand in the gary? Johnny, you know, my national communication officer certainly is a very deep-thinking young man for placing me on the program for this morning. We right. just spoke on education. We are speaking about public accounts. Right. I'm on the public accounts committee. Right. So I know the way the system is supposed to work. Mm. And it is very strange, first of all, that it is the Minister for Information mm. who comes out to state a position mm. that is the position of the Ministry of Finance. He speaks for government, doesn't he? So are we now to assume that from now on, any time we come across any infraction in any of the audit reports mm. from 2017, 2018, it is the Minister for Information who will respond, both publicly and even when the, the, report, the, 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 the committee mm. begins sitting on the report. Very unusual. But in any case, the way it works is this. When the auditors perform their audit, Part of the process requires that the auditees, mm. in this case the institutions that are being audited, right. provide them with all the information that they need. Right. When you provide that information, they go and do their work. Then they come back to you for what we call the exit conference. Okay. The exit conference allows the auditee or the institution mm. the opportunity to respond to other issues. To raise questions. And raise questions. Mm about the findings of the auditor. Mm. And if there are any outstanding material or documentation that the auditors require, mm. 
then you make them available. So it is not the responsibility of the auditors mm -hmm. to be chasing institutions and auditees around for documentation. You are must you, remember. Are you, are you that suggesting that somebody at the finance ministry well, failed to provide it, documents? Is it not obvious? I mean, when you read the, 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 the query mm -hmm. of the auditors, and, and I, I have it here. I, I don't know whether it, it, time will per permit us to uh, read it. You could read a bit of it. I have it as well, but you know, because of our it time. It is very clear. And the auditors are very clear in their minds that something wasn't right. That the documentation, the way the contract was done, they even said that some of the invoices mm. that they had the chance to, to look at post-dated when the contract came into being. All of these are red flags. Could you, so could you auditor, say the, their findings are wrong, the auditor, unfounded, and non-factual? I am a member of the Public Accounts Committee. I have seen the work of the Auditor General. I have seen the work that this specific Auditor General is doing. Mr. Domelovo. A lot of people are uncomfortable. Mm. But he is a man who is very resolved to work in the interest of Ghana. And if indeed the ministry or government has any reason to challenge the finance of the Auditor General, they should appear before the Public Accounts Committee and make their case. And they should make sure they bring their they needed documentation. Because we will have to verify. As members of the Public Accounts Committee... They say the Auditor General went ahead to draw conclusions. When the President addressed the media, mm. uh, I think sometime earlier this year, I just want to, 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 to uh, let you understand something. The double standards. Mm. And I think it, it had to do with some... Uh, audit that was done and they said that they had saved some 5.4 billion mm. and he says this is the president speaking fellow Ghanaians, corruption or more specifically the stealing of public funds continues to hold back the development of our nation mm. a recent audit by the auditor general into the liabilities of the ministries departments and agencies led to the disallowance of some 5.4 billion of claims. I don't want to read all. Mm. This report had not come for us to sit on it. In Parliament. In Parliament. Yet the President saw it fit and acceptable to quote it and to talk about it. And the same Auditor General, mm. I believe, was responsible for the provision of this report. So what is the difference? Why is it that the President can speak about the content mm of an audit report which has not yet come to the to the public accounts committee for sitting so bottom line and saying, yet the auditor general mm. whose work it is to do this as part of the effort to block loopholes mm. to expose corruption and to ensure that the public press is, is, is protected you say he doesn't have the right to indicate the, the auditor general what he has for. found that there was monies paid to a foreign company for no work done. The Auditor General is calling for an immediate abrogation yes, of that contract. Yes, and a cancellation. He has every right to, because the information available to him. Mm. And he's a professional. This is not somebody who mm. just walked from the street and has produced this uh, report. Mm. He has done his work. So, if, but, but if the ministry has any problem with what he has done, mm. they will have their day before the Public Accounts Committee. Bottom line is you are saying the government is crying wolf. Government is crying wolf because there is a sense of danger mm. that portends when this issue came up and the way the public discourse around it is going. What kind of danger is this? But it is obvious. Many people believe that this was a, a great root and sheer activity that went on. Mm. And many people believe that is why the documentation for it is very sketchy. And that is why the Auditor General has deemed it fit. To, to raise that flag and to call for the abrogation of the contract and the retrieval of any monies paid. Could, could it, the, it, could, it's couldn't the Auditor General have waited a bit to get the other party, why, why should the, auditees, the auditees, to, to the, give the full complement? Johnny, that is documents. what I told you earlier. It is not the responsibility of the Auditor General to wait for you. He, he is working with timelines. So if, if he comes to you, let me see your books, show me your documentation, and you give what you have. He goes and, and does his work. Exit conference. You don't raise any objections. Mm. 
he publishes his report and you are faulting him for doing his job. In fact, the public officers, mm. the, the office of the senior minister, and I hear right. it has been yeah, mentioned, exactly. and the Ministry of Finance, they are the ones that should be blamed because they failed to make the needed information available to the auditor. And on the basis of whatever information they gave, the auditor has drawn his conclusions and they have to answer. Okay, what will be your conclusion? That's the voice of Dr. Clement Park. He is uh, the MP for Bolsa. Uh, South Doc, thank you very much for your Kubasa, time. Kubasa. Kubasa. <laughs> I need jam, jam, jam. And, well, jam, jam. <laughs> and uh, we were expecting the NPP to send us a rep as always, but, um, well, as you can obviously tell, the MPP rep is conspicuously missing. The issues are on, too heavy. On the set. Well, I don't know about yeah, he's that. He's taking a nap. I, I don't know about well, I mean, that. What is he going to come you and are, say? You are suggesting well, that. I, mean, I don't did, know. Are we going to I discuss the, I, I don't the, the, know. the short report? I don't know. I mean, what was he to come I don't know say? what you are suggesting. Of course, they are born uh, into hiding. But all I know is that we had a chair for the MPP <laughs> person. Uh, nobody turned up. And uh, <laughs> as you know, this platform is very fair. We give everybody a chance.